Now, we have a massive bureaucracy, and a president can use it in ways that are abusive. CEI, one of the uh, wonderful free market think tanks, reports that our regulations are costing us, that is, the government's regulations are costing us $2 trillion a year. They are job killers. They are entrepreneur killers. They are business killers. They kill the American system. I'm tired of people saying, oh, but don't you believe in clean air and clean water? This has nothing to do with clean air and clean water. Nothing whatsoever to do with clean air and clean water. This is a movement. It is a radical, hard left movement. Washington Free Beacon, one of the great websites. Obama administration's midnight regulations to total $44 billion. These midnight regulations, this is a phrase given to regulations, really coined by the Landmark Legal Foundation in decades of litigation against the, uh, the bureaucracies, and midnight regulations, which is what we call them in our, uh, in our briefs. What this means is, as an administration is closing down, it spills out all these outrageous, monstrous, onerous regulations. You've already voted, right? You've already elected somebody else to come into the presidency. And yet they're still governing, of course, until that new president and vice president are sworn in. And so this is where maximum damage occurs. Maximum damage. The Obama administration has put forth 25 so-called midnight regulations, which will cost the economy $44.1 billion, according to a report from the American Action Forum. Midnight regulations are rules that are published after Election Day and before the next president is inaugurated, in January 2017. Earlier this year, the administration estimated that there would be $5.2 billion in regulatory costs incurred during that time. The $44.1 billion in regulatory costs have overshot that estimate more than eight times. The administration's final regulatory agenda includes $75.3 billion in costs, which includes the cost of these midnight regulations but has added to the $150 billion in regulatory costs the administration has already produced this year. Folks, that's nearly a quarter of a trillion dollars in costs. But Mark, don't you believe in clean air and clean water? It has nothing to do with that. The administration has implemented many of its regulatory priorities, virtually all of the so-called Affordable Care Act, a majority of the Dodd-Frank, and dozens of rules aimed at reducing so-called greenhouse gas emissions. However, as this agenda demonstrates and recent regulatory output corroborates, there are still key rulemakings left for the waning days of the Obama administration. Now, some of the key rules involve efficiency standards for the Department of Energy, corporate average fuel economy standards for your car and truck, which are costing us lives, tens and thousands of lives, and other types of casualties. The lighter a car, the less protected you are in an accident. Again, simple physics. Efficiency standards for housing, power supplies, and heating equipment put forth between November and December of this year. November and December of this year will cost well over $11 billion. This is why companies like Carrier say, we've had it. We've got to get the hell out of here. And yet, we attack the company. The most expensive regulation put out during this time will go to the Department of Health and Human Services for a rule called the Protection of Human Subjects. The Protection of Human Subjects. Obviously, uh, they're not talking about babies in the womb because they don't believe in protecting them. Those are choices. The rule will cost over $13 billion and is designed to, quote, better protect human subjects involved in research, while facilitating valuable research and reducing burden, delay, and ambiguity for investigators. What? Everything not yet final could come under scrutiny from President-elect Trump and the Republican Congress next year, the report says. The agenda might reveal $44.1 billion in midnight regulations today, but they could vanish quickly in a series of votes or executive actions next year. Let us hope that occurs. Let us hope that occurs. This is flat-out tyranny. That's what it is, folks. It's flat-out tyranny. And the departments and the agencies have been put on notice. Push, push, fast, fast, get it done, get it done, before they show up. And yet I'm wondering if the transition team and Trump's advisors are actually watching this stuff. 
Is it coming through the back door? Because the fact of the matter is, rather than getting offended at legitimate law-abiding American businesses like Boeing, Trump should show a little bit more anger at the man he's replacing, who has spent eight years destroying our country. These things that Obama, these things he's doing, are political minefields he's creating, and there's going to be hundreds and hundreds of them from agency to agency, from department to department. The incoming Trump administration is going to have to spend years tracking this stuff down and undoing it. Years. And they're going to be sabotaged. You know, the clown who predicted that Trump would win the presidency, Professor Erwin Corey, or whatever the hell his name is, he's also predicted that he's going to be impeached. Well, Professor, I predicted that before you, if the Democrats take the House in two years. Of course, that's what they would have to do. Because the Democrats are on a jihad by hook or by crook. And I have warned publicly the incoming people in the Trump administration, whether they serve in the White House, whether they serve in the departments, whether they're cabinet members or sub-cabinet members, that they are going to be targeted, there will be investigations, they will seek to criminalize them, they will push for special prosecutors. This is what they do. It happens administration after administration. This is what they do. And yet, what does Donald Trump think about Barack Obama in these, these recent days? Well, he told uh, Matt Lauer on the Today Show yesterday what he thought of Obama. Cut one, go. We have a really good chemistry together. We talk. Uh, he, he loves the country. He wants to do right by the country and for the country. And I will tell you, we obviously very much disagree on certain policies and certain things, but... Uh, you know, I really like him as a person. I was and, fascinated and way, to read in your interview that you say you actually talked to President Obama about some of your possible appointments. I do. And the people you would surround yourself in the White House. Can you tell Correct. me specifically who you mentioned to President Obama that you were considering appointing? Well, I don't think that would be fair to him, but I have asked him what he would think of this one and that one. I've asked him what he thinks are the biggest problems of the country. What are some of the greatest assets going forward? And we have a very good dialogue. They have very good cut dialogue. They're very cool. Very good dialogue. I know. Got to reach across the aisle and look like you're, uh, you know, you're working together. But no, I don't think so. Not with Obama. So Obama's sabotaging the incoming administration. And Trump seeking his advice on people and so forth. He doesn't have to prove anything to anybody, Trump. He's the president-elect. He doesn't have to prove he gets along with Obama. Why do we care if he gets along with Obama? Obama doesn't care if he gets along with Trump. Look what he's doing. He's already sabotaging the incoming administration. And trust me, there's going to be more that will be found. And Obama's not leaving Washington. And unlike these other former presidents, he's going to spend his time shooting spitballs all over the place. Planning them in private and shooting them publicly. How come we know that Obama's a no-good ideologue? How come we know that Obama practices Alinsky tactics? Don't the people around Trump know that? Doesn't Trump know that? It's important that Trump get many of these things he promised done. Not for him, for us. And Obama is going to do everything he can to sabotage him. And he's doing it right now. My advice to Donald Trump, stop talking to Obama. Stop asking him for information. There's other former presidents around. Ask them. Obama's the worst. 